Lee Sinban means, okay. will they first pick Eve, or does that put Amazing on something that's not in his top tier? Will it be Volibear? Well, we can get that AD carry pick out of the way, but just because everybody loves Lucian. Twitch is still up. However, so are things like TF. So many mid lanes actually still up with, with a lot of uh, mid lane bans here. Three mid lane bans. They still have, you know, TF Nidalee, Yasuo, all three of those circling. Early Lulu lock in doesn't really give away anything, doesn't have to go mid. Zion has played a fairly beastly Lulu top as well. Uh, so good early flex pick there from Dignitas, not giving away too much, except for the Braum. That's a, uh, a melee duo lane already going to show here for Dig and see what TSM can use to uh, go into that lane. Because if, if you want to actually take a strong solo laner and then use like a Lucian plus Zyra or something mm -hmm. and just fully heavy harass early from range, you know, like Lemon was saying, sometimes it is hard to get ahead on Braum if you don't get to the point where you have enough defensive stats to actually take hits. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you jump in front of somebody because you'll just go down uh, quickly first. Well, see, that's the case right now. 2v0s, people don't tend to even be in the crosshairs anyway. Hit maybe some <laughs> turrets with plants, but you pretty much hide. Hey, let's talk about Amazing's jungle pick here because that's been a uh, heated source of debate for not only TSM fans, but all of the League of Legends fans. See how Amazing does perform on somebody who's outside of those uh, four top junglers. Yeah, Jarvan, he does actually have a fairly squishy early game. He is susceptible to counter jungling. Yeah. Um, we'll have to see if Amazing goes the route that I'm really passionate about, which is maxing your shield second for Jarvan, especially with all the recent buffs to it, or if he just goes full offensive and does the standard uh, flag and drag max first, which, yeah, you get more burst damage for jumping in on somebody, but you lose out on so much survivability. Yeah, I think I think in a game like this, you do max shield second. Like, you're not running, like, a Twitch plus, like, a Jax top lane or something, so you've got really not a lot you need to yeah, amplify even, here. Even Lucian, like, yeah, you get, you know, some more calling shots, but he's not really attack yeah. speed based. He's definitely not one of those much. spell slinger style AD carries, so we'll see. Hopefully he does... Well, we're just... Hopefully for yeah. <laughs> for my prediction sake, <laughs> for go, your prediction sake, they go for do. the shield uh, shield second. Cinder uh, oh. comes through. Of course, we saw the Shivana Nocturne still picked up though as well for Crumbs to keep in mind. So he's gone back for that pick. I think three times in a row now. Evelyn yeah. doesn't go through. So apparently, screw the tier list. Let's pick what you want to play. So the thing is, I do like the heavy damage Nocturne in this situation because they have so many shields to supplement his defensive prowess. He could block a spell, and then he's going to be doing so much damage, he actually sustains a lot in the team fights just by auto-attacking. With shields from Ori and Lulu, he's got a lot of offensive power that he can even zone with here. So it's a great front line, actually, for Cutie Pie on Jinx. I really like this offensive Nocturne, but this time around, not only do they have a Lulu, but they also have Orianna. So two AP sort of semi-support solo laners yeah. to go along with this offensive jungle. If Crumbs can get going, he is now set up to carry this game. It's really going to be a lot on his shoulders. Yeah. Uh, whereas Cutie Pie, it looks like a lot of pressure will be taken off of him because there's so much pressure up front with the Nocturne jumping in with Shockwave that in Dig's, uh, in Dig's case, they're hoping that Cutie Pie will be able to fire uh, from him, uh, with impunity from the back line. Yeah. And you heard what Lemonation said as well a couple minutes ago, saying with someone like Braum compared to Thresh, you want to be able to get a lead on him before you can really do anything. And the two-on-two -two lane actually doesn't look that good for Dig, so maybe they look to swap on this one. But we'll see what happens. Before we the, actually start the battle, let's see who you guys think is going to be victorious. According to lolesports.com, it's actually going to be TSM leading Dignitas, 55-45. A close so vote. Not very, very hotly contested matchup here. Keep sending your picks in, though, throughout the entire game. You just tweet us at LO Esports, and you use the hashtag either TSMWIN or DIGWIN, depending on which coach you want to see in a bowl cut. That's true. It's gotta, you got to go the other way, though. Yeah. Yeah. Just gotta make it sure still depends on which one you want to see in a bowl cut. Well, that's true. I didn't say vote for the one you want to see in a bowl cut. It's just if Scar wins, he won't <laughs> have the bowl cut, so make sure you keep that in mind with this one. Uh, so loading into the rift there, looks like everyone's going to be happy with this one. The Syndra mid lane's going to be fun. He basically blind picked that one, assuming the Lulu could be swamped around. The Shivana, I noticed she had like a really good win rate in LCS so far, 20 and 7. 
mm -hmm. is uh, very so impressive. The thing about Shivana, with the popularity of this teleport, with the giant reduction in um, cooldown when you go to turrets, mm -hmm. so many people have been taking it. Shivana is a very easy champion to play with teleport because once you teleport into a fight, not only do you have this giant gap closer with your ulti, but she also has a speed boost right after that with burnout. So even if your teleport is a little bit off, you can get around a flank very, very quickly with her. And we'll see how Dyrus performs in the champion of this game. We are on to the rift, 26 seconds in. Lots of pings and lots of places for both these guys. Yeah. Welcome really to early uh, top heavy movements from Dig. So maybe they will opt for this switch. Looks like they may be setting up for a blue buff invade. Let's see if they go for the later invade here from Ding Toss going towards the blue side. Now, swapping a Jinx is always nice because you can get a lot of turret down, damage down very quickly. Mm -hmm. You don't even have to take the turret, though. I love it when the teams just get them very low, soften up the turret, and then you keep it low for when you actually want to get that influx of global gold for your team, and you're ready to make a move because you want that turret for denying minions uh, for the early game. However, when you're ready to make the move, if it's easy to knock down, then you can pretty much chain that with your uh, follow-up moves here. TSM, though, with a counter invade. Let's see how this one All right, now rolls TSM out. Make their way forward. And this is a nice little ward. Crumbs puts that over the wall, so he will be able to spot the camp as it's cleared. Be able to spot any wards TSM puts down. And they have been surrounded. Do put one in. They do have to be a little bit careful on this one. They have a way out. Let's see if... Uh, Oh, Amazing wow. can draw anything on uh -oh. the ground with a desk uh -oh. they, they sent Bjergsen away. This could have been a 5v4 collapse. Our Dignitas actually going to pull the trigger here, though. TSM waiting a long time in here. Numbers definitely against them as well if Dig decide to go for this. Oh, wow. They've got a pincer move. They can... Bjergsen's going to lane. This is oh, four for spot. Oh, he, he misses. misses the slow end. Gleam. Gleam has he flashes towards his team. That means he's still surrounded. Stun's going to land. Gleam's got nowhere to go. Kill picked up for Dignitas. Yes, it is. He was in the front line. Crumb's still low. The damage amazing goes down as well. Now Dyrus has a flash. Two shots till he gets stunned. Nothing else quite picked up, but 2-0. Dig is a great way to start. Great collapse from Dig. The small, small area there without vision for TSM. They were a little overconfident with that move. Crumbs also, by the way, tried to flash over and smite away the red from Amazing. But Amazing gets off the smite really quickly here. So they see Crumbs on the backside. Good smite, a little bit late on the flash from Crumbs, and he just walks out of this one. Even though they didn't steal that red back, though, it goes disastrous for TSM because they lose the red anyway. Amazing does go down, and it's a pretty good early start here for Dig. Crumbs needs a little bit extra help on this buff, and Kiwi Kid, happy to give it to him. Yeah, he's gonna be fine. Blue, there we go, there's a smite as well. So, blue, uh, sorry, red buff went to Zion Spartan. Uh, and he's actually in a one-on-two right now, so it's going to actually go mostly uh, to waste here. Okay, it could buff up his Lulu jungling, though. Lulu is not okay. the best at double jungling with someone, so any little edge that Lulu can get for this early game might help out, but you're right. Generally, he's not going to be making a lot of use of that, unless he goes for some sneaky gank on Bjergsen here. It's like an 8% slow, like 5 or 8% slow from range champions to low level. Extra, so. extra deeps this is. Yeah, extra deeps definitely nice. Let's see if it gets anything out of this. Bjergsen level 3, same as Shifter. Um, from my recollections of, of watching Dig and Toss games so far, Shifter's been having a, a rougher time in lane of late. They tend to see him down in CS. Typically it's because he roams a lot. Yeah, that was a nice dodge on this one. You've actually got some friends coming in. He's got to be a bit careful. And this is not the side you expect them to come from. Amazing. Gets the ward down. They see Zion Spartan. No gank going to come through. It looks like, oh, he steals a small wraith. Four gold. Not exactly a successful invade. Successful roam from Glebe, though. Anytime you get to take out that first pink ward, it's a roost. That is uh, most of that first, first blood money as well. Yeah. Uh, the early deaths, even though Dig have uh, the extra gold count up top, that gold's already been taken out. Well, 100 of it. Yeah. D definitely a portion of it, for sure. Uh, an early... Uh, deep Ward comes out as well. Gleeb actually opened Boots, by the way, if we didn't Whoa. lose that one. Crumb's really dangerous. He's playing super greedy like a top laner here. He's See in range he... of the play. The damage comes in. Can he drop this hook? From the brush, it's going to be a bit harder. Can he spell shield? Does not spell shield anything useful. Crumb goes down. It's, that was such a greedy play since he doesn't have flash from the early game shenanigans. Uh, you know, a, a lot of times we've seen top laners get into this situation. Pretty much all the North American top laners have learned over time 
don't do that. Uh, don't stand under that tower because it's not worth it, especially without a ward here. Crumps does pay for it, though, and swings right back in dig favor here. Ooh, they're still in there. A uh, bit of a danger there. Dyrus, an amazing right around. Let's see, Zion has flash. Kiwi Kid does as well, so maybe they get out from this one. Walter is still pushing up level four and three, and there's a push onto the turret. Dyrus comes around. They've got to get away from this one. He's going to jump to him. Oh. Kiwi Kid's going to sacrifice himself. Unless you get to a minion, there's the jump in the shield and everything he can do, but and no. back on bleed. Uh, Ignite is on turret. That's not going to land anymore, and he's going to stay safe. So TSM has answered all the kills back, and they're equal in gold. It's a pretty good job there by TSM, swinging this one right back around. But it, I think it has a lot to do with actually just mistakes by Dig. So, uh, you know, congrats to TSM on capitalizing on the movements here from Dig and a uh, little bit of greed, I have to say. Yeah. Now, right now, Bjergsen's still holding the line shift. They're actually equal CS between these two. And these are two of the guys in contention for best mid lane in North America last split, and they're. Uh, holding very equal to each other right now, so got to say as, it's, as expected. Yeah, and I didn't talk about it in Champion Select because, you know, I got, got tricked last week when Sindra was picked against Bjergsen, but this is one of his old go-to champions. He loves his Sindra. You know, when he was over in Europe, he spammed this champion a lot, both in solo queue and he also used it in the European LCS, so extremely comfortable on it and glad to see him back on something like this. He's the type of guy that will get these kills you don't expect off screen that the camera won't even catch yeah. uh, by bursting someone down 100% to zero. Yeah, camera gets a little nervous after we say that. <laughs> <laughs> Shows, hey, no damage, all right? He's six, but <laughs> now you got to keep it there the entire rest of the game. Pjergsen six, can't go away. Yeah, and let's Leap see what... A uh, lot of wards. Ward Slayer, three so far this game. Now, I like this move. Uh, TSM roaming a lot with Leib with the early sweeper. Getting behind Cutie Pie. Traps come down. What? Can he dodge the uh, play? Can look for the hook? He doesn't even go for the EQ. Great minions. Great minion line right, line right there. Aiding Cutie Pie. And what looked like a good move from TSM, uh, you know, they kind of foiled that one. And Dignitas take advantage. This time it's actually it Dig taking advantage of a TSM move. And they're able to strike back here. This should be a good chunk of gold as well as the timer. There's been, I don't think, think there's any ward there for TSM, so they will not know the second timer for Dragon either. They can, they can guess maybe at the, at the movements of the map, but that is it for these guys. I actually was also impressed if you guys saw that Kiwi Kid's aggro dancing was very, very good. Yeah, a lot of the supports have been getting much better at that because these early dragons have become so common. If you want to take these two and a half, as we just saw, or three and a half minute dragons, you really need to uh, juggle that. You can't be lazy and just face tank the early dragon, or else you lose it up on so much map pressure just by how low your champion gets from doing it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, speaking of map pressure, then we're going to send Cutie Pie now to the top side of the map one more time because, well, nothing to teleport to, so he's going to sit here against Dyrus, and that TP might not be useful for him. And even though the TSM first move up to that top lane was unsuccessful, they left behind so much vision that they can repeat this move. They've got pink ward in the river, guaranteeing that their path won't be seen, and then they have some deep vision on that red side as well. So they might look to try and keep down this Jinx for the early game. I'll see if they can make the repeat visit. So far, Jinx has not gone down that top lane gank. They didn't commit for it too hard, so he's been staying safe, farming up, actually beating Wild Turtle and Minion score right here. They've both backed once for BF Swords. Um, so pressure is still kind of off for Cutie Pie. His flash still up on top of that. Kiwi Kid is joining him. Only level three, now four on yeah. the Brahms. He's got some catching up to do. That's really common nowadays with the uh, switches because there's so much roam time with these supports that we get this giant level discrepancy. You can see Glebe still level three right now as well because he has not been with Wild Turtle for pretty much this entire game. He's been clearing out a lot of wards, though. Speaking of which, seven sweepers uh, have been picked up in this game. Dignitas now actually just coming up and getting a bunch more sweepers up on the 10 minute mark. We should have pretty much everybody. Oh, D pop. There's going to be the flash away from Cutie Pie. Traps are actually pretty well aimed at that one, forcing the lantern away. Amazing stays safe, but Cataclysm for Flash, a pretty good trade. Yeah, especially on the AD carry. It's always a trade that you will take with Jarvan. Crumb's trying to take advantage of that. You see Jungler top, immediately make a move bottom. The Nocturne ulti is even more. 
uh, impressive of a cooldown than the Jarvan ulti. So we'll see if Crumbs can make anything happen with it. Nocturne ulti pretty long at this stage of the game. There. A lot of pressure here on Bjergsen. See if they go for it. They do have the Lulu ulti as well. So when Crumbs goes in, Zahn can knock his target up for the duration for the fear to get off. So it's a really good combo that you do. Nocturne jumps in, starts his fear tether, knock up, keeps him there long enough for the fear to go off. And hopefully for your sake, your target will be dead. Ooh, a whole bunch of damage in the turret. Cutie Pie will not go for it just yet, but you're seeing Dyrus held back Whoa. by the Spartan. Gotta be careful. Low health bar pops the ulti. Perfect culling from Wild Turtle. Cannot get any more damage down, though. And he doesn't over commit to it because he doesn't have very much vision down there. It's This is something we haven't seen a lot from Wild Turtle is safe play. Calculated yeah. aggression. He goes for the favorable trade and he gets the damage down, but does not overcommit. It would have cost him his life there as well because Crumbs with his ulti and his flash could have easily capitalized and uh, even with the summoners of Turtle taking him down. Right there is going to stay safe in this one though and the game stays pretty close to equal but Dignitas right now up a turret and a dragon early in this game. 1300 gold lead right there. Wild Turtle still able to pressure the bot lane at least a little bit. This ward's going to die. Down it goes. TSM doing a good job of clearing wards away. Glee puts the same board down as before, spotted as well by Shifters. And this is the uh, Buddy Vision squad that Hut. we talked about. Uh, Hut. They saw it. Glee's the, yeah. Glee's the, <laughs> Glee, hey. he's the brain to this operation. Made it happen. They're good to go. He's going to be okay. Well, Turtle, yep, going to stay safe in this one as well. So the first backs have come through. Bloodthirster down for Cutie Pie should be the exact same. Yep, it is. Wild Turtle. 12 minute blood with both these 80 carries. That's what um, Sneaky was talking about. It's very uncontested. You're sure to be powerful by the time these fights start. Mm -hmm. uh, but the 80 carries are similarly powerful, so you can't really say like one team is just going to do better right now. Mid laner is also three minions apart. Even the top laner has been four. So uh, aside from the global gold that's been picked up and very successfully, I might add, by Dignitas, equal game. I do want to also note that um, QD Pi here has purchased a pink ward. So he's going to help out with that vision ward. Uh, with that vision game uh, a lot here. Uh, we don't often see that from AD carries, uh, but it's a good early pickup from him, especially since uh, they are trying to control this roaming Jarvan who's looking to pick up uh, kills with the Thresh, this two-man roam squad here from TSM that has a lot of crowd control. If they do catch somebody off guard from that Fog of War, man, Bjergsen just cannot take down that blue one. Nope. He's killing little guys. Long, CS it's good. a long-standing battle. Yeah, he's inflating his CS numbers. There you go. And then he's like, amazing, kill this thing. I want another three CS in a minute. <laughs> it's raising his stats. He's lying to you guys, though, on eSports.com. It is worth fantasy points, though. So he's doing the, the, very, very the TSM fan service. Increase in fantasy points for CS, though. One of you guys going to win this week by 0 .09 points, and you'll thank Bjergsen for that. All right, Dragon up in 10. Teleports up for both top laners. Both top laners can also interrupt each other. Uh, we'll watch the distance that they have. Looks like Dignitas actually would like to face tank this dragon, and TSM are happy to trade mid. Nope, they're roaming down. Should be a collapse here. Ulti goes enough. off early to deny vision. Ooh, denies all division. Looks like it's going to be going down rather rapidly for Dignitas. They get that one. Hook comes out for Glebe. Lands a Kiwikin. Ulti comes out as well. They're going to spam CC, but Kiwikin is going to go down for his troubles, but hey. Dragon for a kill, not too bad. Hey, that's a support kill. And not only did they get the dragon, they also got the teleport out of Dyrus. What a spell. Ooh. Shield kept himself safe. Summoner heal used as well by Cutie Pie. And did get away with some summoners lost, to be fair. Yeah, so they had to burn a couple flashes in the end there. It was a good chase by TSM. They didn't want to let him get away with that because a dragon for a teleport and just one kill, mm -hmm. uh, pretty good trade there for Dignitas. They were able to get that. Um, global gold down, as well as the advantage here for Zion. Zion on Lulu, happy to just walk his way down because of the speed buff. But really, can he make anything with this next teleport? Shifter shows you how to control that Wraith camp, by the way. Yep. Maxing W first on Orianna. It's a different build. We don't see it all the time. Nice juke by Wild Turtle. Looks like he's pretty swift, despite his name. Gets out of the way of the skill shots. Q the kid, gonna just chill in the duel lane. Turtles can actually move small distances pretty quickly. Really? Yeah. I didn't know that. S snapper turtles. <laughs> <laughs> All right.
He got it. <laughs> there was a rumbling in the crowd. <laughs> is, he, is he gonna be able to finish it this time? Yes, and he gets back to lane without losing any lane minions. Nice. That's done. the key. You don't wanna lose any lane minions for that. Meanwhile, up top, Zion uh, has been able to get a lot of extra lane minions himself. It's good for him, actually. 87 minutes to 73. So yeah, the slightest of leads over Dyrus, but really both these teams Happy to play a very measured game right here. Dignitas said that TSM played uh, too cautiously in the interviews before the game. Uh, though really both these teams look to be kind of in the same spot. Wave clear from Wild Turtle. Kiwi Pie gonna tank that, kind of between the two of them. Turret's at half HP. The Jinx turret sieging not really coming into effect yet for Dignitas. No, nope, Kiwi Pie still uh, so powering up. Now, Lucian doesn't have bad late game scaling. We always do hype up Jinx late game scaling, but uh, Lucian is no slacker, so mm -hmm. Turtle will be just fine. Yeah, the thing to keep in mind, actually, with AD carries like this is uptime. Yeah, exactly. More mobility does translate into more damage. Right. Especially when you are versus teams that have heavy crowd control and dive like this with Nocturne. Um, same thing goes with uh, Cutie Pie. You know, how well are these shield solo laner is going to be able to let him auto attack when he's faced with this not only Jarvan and uh, Shivana but also Syndra stun extremely yeah. long range it's really really good at sniping out AD carries mm -hmm. yeah Syndra stun I think is the longest range non ultimate stun in the game I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm trying to think about the other sort of mechanics there and aside from like Ash Arrow yeah it is, it is uh, so. that's why they also are fighting so heavily for vision control um, because you can utilize that center stun from Fog of War extremely effectively to easily turn around games. So we'll keep our eyes on Cutie Pie and his positioning. I think about Cutie Pie actually. I'm looking at the builds right now for TSM. Amazing's going early, Spectre Scowl or Aegis. Uh, not Ninja Tabby coming in for Glebe. Dyrus, Merc treads, and then he's going towards, I don't know, it's like, it's like health but not armor. So uh, if Cutie Pie does get ahead of the curve, he's going to shred through the people of TSM. Yeah, and again, what Dignitas, their plan is here is to have TSM so much focus on crumbs, you know, with crumbs turning off the lights and jumping in, uh, especially with that shockwave. They're hoping that, you know, TSM, they're going to have their hands full dealing with this Nocturne and all these uh, shields on him that they don't have to worry about Cutie Pie's safety as much as you usually do with Jinx. Uh, so we'll see how effectively that plan does work out because it seems like they have a good two threat operation going here for Dig. And some great supplemental damage coming in from the dual APs. Yeah, definitely. Those guys do scale pretty nicely. I think Orianna gets to be a bit more magey by endgame compared to a Lulu, but certainly... I mean, look at the way he's building. He definitely is going heavy damage. So yeah. this is definitely not a utility Orianna. They've got a pretty, yeah. no pretty legitimate four damage threats for Dig. See how they do right now, just the constant wave clear back and forth. You're seeing a significant minion lead to the mid laners compared to the top laners, but to be expected in this kind of a gameplay. Um, both mid laners holding pretty faithfully to the 10 CS per minute mark, 180 plus at 18 minutes. AD Berg carries just behind them. Greg's been cheating a little though, as we saw. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> like, the three little rays aren't even worth one caster minion. So unfair. Let's see here how the, uh, the side lanes do shake out because you do have to put a lot of, um, of your resources to protect this cutie pie deep farming in a lane that has no turret if you're digging a toss. Um, so not only do you need vision down there, but they've also sent crumbs uh, to back up the duo lane here. Four members from TSM, they'll swing down for a little bit. Just kind of going back and forth saying, you know, what kind of minion waves are available? What can we look for? But the dives really aren't happening. They're just playing the resource game. And then if they can get the ward coverage to make these happen, then they'll go for it. And this game can change very quickly. We talked about how many damage threats there are in Dig, but TSM have two people going full tank. This is a Shivana going full tank and a Jarvan jungle as well. He didn't even go with the Spirit of the Elder Lizard, which is very popular solo queue for Jarvan because it feels good to burst somebody down mm -hmm. in that combo. He's just gone full defensive tank Jarvan here. Yeah. Um, I mean, we even see Lizard in competitive too. Like This is the first Golem Jarvan I've just seen flat out. Uh, however, he is not acting his shield second. So, yeah. <laughs> we keep... 
keep he's up with best. those buffs. But um, yeah, he is going with Ooh. the extra attack speed for his team, maxing his flag second on that Jarvan. Looks like we may have our first team fight though. Dyrus heading down the river, gonna try and flank. There's a good line of wards for Dignitas. They should not be caught off guard though. Kiwi could block for the team and he backs right on out. So mid lane turret goes down for TSM's dragon pickup. Dignitas continue to hold their 500 gold lead there and you can see how it spreads out across the team. Pretty, pretty much equal down the line. Yeah, I think uh, it was a great move there by Dig. Very quick. Objective in and you get it down. It's just pull back off. However, since everybody went to farm side lanes, it's very easy for TSM to answer. Uh, Dignitas did that on purpose, though. This is a um, test, though. TSM four-man mid. They valued the solo farm on Jinx so much that they just sent her down to trade turrets. They would not like to give up two turrets for one. No. Pop the ulti, big damage comes through. Shockwave hits on three. Kiwikin goes down, though. They're gonna answer back on the cleave. One for one so far. Crunch flash and he keeps it, but doesn't find the fear. Wild Thriller kites back successfully. Two for one so that far. Hits. Slow onto amazing. There comes Zion Spartan, and then shut him down. Two for two this fight. Pearson getting hit up. They will land the slow. They will get the kill. A double kill for Shifter. 3 0 and 2. Great shockwave right off the bat from Shifter, and then Crumps goes in to answer. They keep him there long enough for QB5 uh -oh. to get back up. Uh -oh. oh! He still gets it. That was close. It was taking the regen to you right then. Wild Turtle, he will get away. He was getting on top of a ward, and Dig did not greed for the kill. Did you know you can soft leash those jungles of camps 10 times before they hard reset nowadays? All right, so there's a good shockwave. Um, Ulti from Jinx coming in pretty quick there as well. All right, so it may have looked a little bit like Crumbs went in too early, but by the time for Cutie to get up there, whenever you're trying to get away from Lulu, Oriana, it's a hard situation because they have so many speed buffs as well as slows. Oh, yeah. But the main half is with Dignitas now holding a actually very slender lead because Dyrus did kill the top out of turret during that replay, so they, they brought it back with three and three turret game. So both teams have killed all three other turrets. Uh, we're sitting at a pretty similar dragon score, and of course, five to five in kills for the scoreboard up there. So rather close game. Yeah, with all these turrets going down, though, let's take a look at the two teams. Dignitas have a much uh, higher potential for killing somebody very quickly if they're out of position, mm -hmm. because everybody's building damage for this Dignitas team. TSM definitely have their fair share of picks with the Syndra, Jarvan, and Thresh all having pretty good pick potential. Um, but they really need to have people focused if they do catch somebody out of, uh, out of line because there's not a lot of damage. If it's just Jarvan and Thresh, the ward squad running around and they catch somebody, they don't have damage, even if they catch someone. So you actually have to have something to back up your CC. Well, we'll see how much backup is going to arrive for these teams because Dignitas right now forced to defend this 4v4 that TSM are continuing to play aggressively. They are the ones looking to siege every single time. The hook's going to land on the Brom. We pick half health bar though. They gotta be careful. Bad. Big damage comes out. Will they get him? They're gonna look for it. Uh, no rocket just yet, but the knockup into Amazing is gonna be really big. And they will kill him with the ignite. Kiwi can take the ulti. He stays alive. One for zero. Tyrus gets done. He's gonna drop into Dragon Form trying to get away, but Crumb's still in the chase. Zap is going to land. There's the haste on up the wow, the burst comes out. And down goes Crumb. One for one in the fight. Both teams have lost their junglers. Drawback of uh, full damage builds there. Oh, now it's DSM on the chase. You gotta be a bit careful. Dyrus still looking to run up the front line. Zion Spartan also gonna haste up. Shockman! Oh my god, look at Pearson! Yes, they will! Two kills picked up on the turnaround. Wild Twitter does not get slow, but TSM <laughs> forced to run. Interesting little exchange. Uh, as both teams underestimate the damage that their opponents still have. Uh, but yeah, you can see how exciting it is when one of the teams just builds full damage. Because people can die in an instant. Now, that was a good long range stun from Bjergsen to start this up, but Gleeve hooks Kiwi Kid. Um, Cutie Pie was also stunned right there uh, and was an available target. Gleeve takes a lot of harass and actually uh, Amazing is the one to bite the bullet here. Kiwi Kid was able to block Syndra ulti, reducing a lot of the damage, so that was great for TSM. And this is the spot where Crumbs gets a little ahead of himself. The shields were not up. When you do build full damage, you gotta work with your solo laners to communicate when your defenses will come back. But the turnaround right here, burst damage coming in. Three, two, one, shockwave, rocket, Ooh. toast. Toast. Nice and crispy here, thanks to the Flame Chompers. Oh, I'm a cutie pie.
TSM's gotta be a bit more careful next time around. 1400 gold lead for Team Dignitas. They do not get any turrets or any global objectives off that last team fight, just the gold for the kills. The vote actually identical on Twitter to so Esports.com. <laughs> and Dig still continue to look pretty scary though. There's, I had heard a fair bit of hype around TSM for this week, but Dig still showing that they are an incredibly strong team. Dyrus Swift in the bottom lane though here. He's got teleport. Uh, Zion kind of defending, but look at this. Dig Toss looking for the Baron attempt, and TSM completely do not know about this. Wow, you know, that's just straight up amazing vision control right there for Dig. They do not throw it around Baron. They secure an easy one, and then they go aggressive. Great Lantern, but Dyrus is actually answering for a turret. Uh, no, he's not. He's full tank. He's not answering for anything. Now, that, that turret's on call waiting. Now, Crumbs, uh, it isn't going full damage. However, it's not selfish uh, defense that he's building. The magic resist aura here, yes, it helps out your whole team, but doesn't give Nocturne himself tanky stats. So he still relies on the AP solo laners for their shields, for his real tank stats. Well, they're going to try for Dragon here. Is there going to be a steal? Nope. Good smite there. Ulti by Brahm does not catch anything. But Dignitas now hold a 3,500 gold lead. They've still got three minutes of the Baron buff. TSM, it'll be hard for them to find ways into the map. They look for the mid lane right here. If Dig don't get there in time, that will be mid tier two. They have a they're wave coming it. up, though. Decide to face tank it. Not much time. Kiwi going to take up enough stuff there, and he's going to stay okay. Wave cleared out. Pearson gets out as well. Let's see how well TSM have uh, been able to time Ooh, ultis as well. Amazing. These blue race. <laughs> yeah. Very important objectives for both teams. This game. TSM have found the ways to kill them. Teleport is up for both of these solo laners. Now, if they get into the split pushing battle, Zion pushes the wave a lot quicker, but he's not going to be able to take down Dyrus ever. <laughs> Dyrus is a very, very tanky man. And Lulu actually does a lot of auto attacks. Uh, so he's going to get slowed by the Randuins, even though it is armor and it's not going to help mitigate. Uh, he does have a decent amount of magic resist as well. So there's not kill potential there for Zion. However, he pushes so much faster that he can push Dyrus out. And so far, it's been working pretty well for Zion. Dyrus is getting most of his farm in these completely solo 1v0 split pushes. That's kind of going to be a, a bit of a concern there for Dyrus if he can't win the 1v1s. TSM often relies on him as this extremely consistent sort of rock to situate the team behind. Uh, not necessarily happening right here if he can't make any headway in the 1v1. Interesting choice here as well by Glebe. He's gone for the mobility for the team, uh, rushing for the speed boost instead of Mikhail's. I mean, there is... There is some targeted CC with the Nocturne Fear uh, or Brom stunts from Dignitas, but they also have a lot of AoE CC. So he's decided that's just better to try and have the whole team avoid some of it rather than get one person out hmm. with a heal. Interesting choice by him. Looking more for that team fight oriented play style. And Dick TSM really just trying to buy time. Zyrus, again, on the far side. Banshee's there helping him stay alive. Dig stay as five, though. They will not stop this turret take. Yeah, we're going to look for round three. Slow but sure, Zyrus is able to get it and answer back. A little bit of gold back in their favor. But as we saw, it's been Dig just slowly creeping up in gold the entire game. Let's see if they can get much else done with the Baron buff, though. Everybody kind of falls back. They have a lot of work to do with vision uh, control to try and clean out TSM's jungle. TSM set up a pretty good de defensive set of pinks so they don't get picked off in their own side jungle here. Always got to worry about that with Nocturne late game. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you're seeing that's kind of why these players are playing so safe. You've got so much reach by Dignitas. And for them, it's really hard to siege because they're facing the incredible wave clear of Jarvan Cinder and Lucian. Uh, you know, Dyrus is not going to leave his team until he's ready to, or not going to leave split pushing rather, until he's ready to sort of TP into a fight. So Zion's got to be able to push this 1v1 without getting caught up by a Cinder stun. They're going to have to need the wave clear, or uh, the ward control, I should say, to make sure Zion can do that without getting caught out. 
Yeah, I think one of the big telling things for the next team fight is going to be how well TSM pay attention to Shifter. Because last time we saw the exchange middle, they forgot about the ulti, or maybe they just thought that he had already used it. Um, but the Orianna Shockwave is going to be massive. He's 5 0 oh, 3 with those three completed items already. And he's already got Azanya's as well. So he's not a very easy target to take down. Shifter, while there's so much, so many other damage sources on Dig, um, you really need to pay attention to that Shockwave and spread out as a team if you're TSM. They cannot, under any circumstances, have Bjergsen next to Wild Turtle. If those two ever get caught, in a shockwave. The yeah. team fight will be lost for TSI. They're the only threats they're jumping in. Kiwi Kid also saves minions as well as Poros and teammates. He's going to put some really good damage down. Actually, Kiwi Kid holding on a turret dagger for a short time. Um, Cutie Pie gets the damage down. He's excited. Walks on out. Sprints on out, I guess, in this case. Both AD carries at three items, and Dignitas slowly make headway. The Baron Buff did not earn them much. It got them one turret. And this is really the furthest that TSM have been outside of their own territory in a long time here. After Dig take an objective, shove right up mid. They don't have you know, vision on either side. They have to worry about these flanks, but they're trying to take advantage of the fact that uh, Dignitas just went back to base. They do get the quick shove, and they finally get the gold from that turret, but now uh, Dig actually do start collapsing. So time and again, TSM find ways to completely counteract whatever Dignitas actually grabs and hold the gold equal, but now Glebe's out by himself. Crumbs goes in, forces a flash. Pops ulti for that one. Kiwi Kid now on the wings as well. No zaps gonna hit. Ooh, Nocturne ulti down. However, TSM are funneled inside this jungle pathway. Kiwi Kid now gonna have to run for his life. He's at half health. It was gonna require some healing by the team to be ready for this one. Wave's gonna get cleared out. They have to wait for their own wave though. 15 seconds away till TSM can push anything else. Top and bot lane nowhere near Dignitas' turret, so TSM can only go into the jungle. But Dragon's up in 12 seconds right now, and Dig are not in location. The thing for TSM here, though, yes, they have two strong tanks for their front line and some great peeling from Thresh. However, penetration items are starting to come in for Dignitas. They've got one Void Staff, as well as the Last Whisper for Cutie Pie. Once they get their second Void Staff, once that uh, Shifter acquires his, then even though they put so much money into all these tank stats for three of their members, or two of their members, I guess Thresh is still pretty squishy, uh -oh. it will be cut through fairly quickly. That's who's the Banshee's Veil here. Cutie Pie has just picked up Red Buff for himself on Jinx. Amazing, gets the slow, Zap hits him as well. They might look for the way in. Stun goes down into Braum. Bjergsen's a little bit far in his zone. No ulti just yet for Crumbs, but he's almost there. Completed lock it. Most of Randuin, so he's soon to be pretty tanky. He's actually, I think, slightly ahead of Amazing in tank stats. Yep. Switched it up. He had enough of the full attack damage Nocturne. Baron numero dos. Nocturne ulti used, so no vision at all. They can't face check anything, even with uh, Jarvan flags. That's going to be damage going down, and the Baron does get picked up, and here comes the fight. Kimi get the front lines. Damage coming through Shifter. Zone away. Who's going down first? Kimi gets staying alive. Cullen comes across. Cutie Pie stays alive, though amazing. Getting ripped apart, and now it's on towards Wild Turtle versus Cutie Pie. Who's going to win the fight? Looks like Turtle doing well, but there comes Crumbs back in. Flash of the wall. One for zero so far for TSM. I feel like that was a bit early on the ulti from Nocturne there. Crumbs. Uh, oh! Back. Wards. Freak. Wards. Wards is good aim. <laughs> With our powers combined, Cutie Pie is Donger Planet. Planet. Donger Planet for Cutie Pie. Let's take another look at it. Okay, so yeah, the Nocturne all actually comes off before they even finish Baron. And Dyrus gets into there. Lucky, luckily for Dignitas, Dyrus is not the TSM jungler. Does not have Smite, not able to steal it. Everybody bails on that. Uh, Baron hit here as well for Dig. And so it is going to be Crumb sacrificing his life to get the flash out of Cutie Pie. But let's take a look at that ward placement. Amazing walks right by one. Shot in the back. Yep. That's just rude. Well, hey, man. Jarvan tried to kill him. Fair enough. Dirty Demasi and do uh, better. There's the, there's the second Void Staff, though, uh, picked up by Shifter. So next fight's going to be 
even a bigger impact from the shock wave. I believe Oriana. that you were thinking Bjergsen there. Huh? This, you remember how Bjergsen got two void stats yesterday? Ah. Uh, I really thought you were going to be like, wait, two void stats for Bjergsen? Aw. It looks like he's uh, burying his builds this time around. Only one so far. Bjergsen likes his void stats like he likes his shens. Two of them every game. He's like a uh -oh. kick though. There Kiwi is. Kid not going to be happy for this one. Low health on him, trying to run away, but Cataclysm says no. Kill picked up by TSM. He's supposed to use the buddy system while warding. That was by himself. All right, so power of Syndra stun from uh, Fog of War. As well, you know, they landed Thresh Hook, pretty much everything. This is what they're talking about in the video package. Kiwi Kid himself said, you got to move it up slowly, your vision. You can't go face checking late game or you'll get killed. Now, he lasts longer than expected because he's Braum and he put up the shield. Yeah. And he actually gets a lot more cooldowns from TSM than expected. I mean, two cooldowns. Uh, yeah. Two ultis, I mean, there from TSM spent and no follow-up from Dig. But it looks like it will be two ultis well spent because True. there's no more fighting before they come back up here. Buys him plenty of time to get ward control back and you see that there are no wars at all from Dig in TSM's territory. Unless I'm missing something. There's like one across the river, that's it. Big slow, Dyer's got to be careful. That's going to be a long fight if he tries to finish him. Yeah, I think he's going to be okay. Blue Elixir's picked up though by both Shifter and Zion, so Dig looking to press something pretty big with this Baron buff. One minute left on that. The Blue Elixir's just now got picked up, so they've got another two minutes to go-ish. Blue buff now as well on Shifter for three minutes, so they've got a small window here. Yeah, and Shifter, I mean, we... Kind of said there was maybe one hole in Shifter's game, which was the CS. Has not been a problem this game, and he's still putting up the crazy numbers, not dying. Five of the kills from his team. Such a strong, strong fantasy pick player, <laughs> as well yeah. as just overall strong LCS player. Let's see if they can actually make something happen with this Baron buff. They do have it on two crucial members, Cutie Pie and Shifter. I believe Zion still has it as well. Yeah, only uh, Brahmin, yep. Brahmin, uh, yeah, Zion, Nocturne died. Yeah, Zion so. still has his. They're staying happy. Looks like Zion will split push the mid lane, but the rest of the siege sieges up top. They swept the blue buff rush. They didn't actually check for the pink wards, though. Now, this is a really good exchange for Dig. Split pushing, trading your Lulu for the AD carry of TSM is a pretty good trade because TSM have so many tanks on their team, and Lucian is a really key part of their damage. Um, so they do get a little bit done on that turret. Zion's so so going for a trade. Down. That's a bloodthirsty though, he's going to be full health again. Yeah, the difference here, after that trade, Turtle can easily lifesteal up. Zion does not have any spell vamp. Lulu has to go all the way back to base. There's actually a really big power spec now for Dig though, in that they have the Infinity Edge done on their AD carry. We mentioned the two Void Staff before as well, and those are really important, but any 5-on-5 five five that's properly positioned would be one that's won by Dignitas. Um, but they, of course, TSM won't allow them to have such a 5v5 They're looking for picks. Uh, the other thing to talk about with the items coming in is there's double locket actually, and that Kiwi Kid bought one himself. Yeah, that's not that's not very strong for uh, for team fights because they don't overlap well. Do have diminishing returns. Ooh, Cutie Pie, a little bit close there to amazing. That's the target they do want to get to the back line on, take him out early. Let's talk about effectiveness of tanks though. Dig, they only have one real tank which is Crumbs jumping in. Uh-oh, here we go. So kind of Kiwi Kid, he's got shields though, stays alive the entire time, amazing, goes down. He overextends and Kiwi Kid barely takes damage in the back end. So one for zero, Dragon back up. That's been going to dig. Very unfortunate there for TSM getting picked off. Dignitas collapsing very quickly. Perfect timing as well. Easily able to take the Dragon right after. Should be a good siege here from Dig. They have very good offensive wave clear. And Jinx, no... No slouch at taking down those turrets in a siege operation. With TSM out of position, this turret is going to instantly go down. PewDiePie can annihilate that thing. And it's going to be doing... Yep, there it goes. Kill picked up. Shirt claims the credit now. And Dignitas up 6,000 gold. Go for the first inhibitor of the game. 40 minutes in. That goes down as well. And the quick and easy escape. Dignitas are looking very sharp. Yep. All it takes is a little bit of wandering. Dignitas to come up with two kills, two very quick and easy objectives. And those are very crucial objectives for the team, too. Middle inhibitor down. 
They should easily be able to clean up these side outer turrets now uh, for Dignitas after they go purchase. But anyways, effective tanks here. Mm -hmm. Crumbs can jump right into Turtle no matter where he is. And he's got the Ran Randuins already. So he's going to be getting those attack speed slows on Turtle as Turtle tries to fend for himself. Um, and then Kiwi Kid, when Crumbs jumps in, Kiwi Kid can jump right next to him and try and get the stun locked down on Turtle. So even though it didn't look like Dignitas had great dive, they really have a strong buddy system here. And Nocturne plus Braum combo is very, very hard to deal with in the late game here, unless Kiwi Kid keeps getting picked off. Yeah, he's got a propensity for that one. Only actually he and Crumbs have deaths. Everyone else actually going deathless right now for Team Dignitas. That's a sign of a good tank line. Yep. <laughs> it's even better if they don't die, but you know, at least they're protecting everyone else. Well. Ooh, good stun on the green. Shield through there. Kiwi Kid actually just doesn't take damage. Colin comes through. He's all right now. you got to be careful if you're amazing. The pull comes in. TSM, the whole team stays safe. Shields come out. Kiwi Kid. Shockwave is health. still up, though, so TSM a little wary about going too hard for this one. Nocturne and Lulu ulti's both blown. See if they can actually rotate up top to work with the wave. Pings are actually to Baron, though. That is a bold call. Two ultis are down, but man, a shockwave, a well-played shockwave. Nice play by wow, Crumbs. Wow, with the yeah. prediction there. That's legit. Oh, Dyer spotted by the ball. Yeah, TSM, it was definitely a bait. They don't want a chance, uh, a shockwave from Shifter at this point. Inside Baron buff. If Baron decides to rain on you and get that magic damage increase, then it would be very, very terrible to use. Lulu would destroy people. So mid. And Lulu's ultimate is just back up now. Short cooldown already ready uh, for the next fight. Crumb is itching to go in. His wow. be close too. He's really near the TSM team. He's waiting He's back really, up. really far away. They've got him out of up. position, but this bottom lane is slowly pushing. Ooh. This might spur Dignitas to actually make a move because they've got a giant wave crashing on bottom turret. They have not sent anyone over just yet. Actually, it's just Crumbs clearing away wards, and they're going to rely on the turret to defend itself, and I'm not sure how well that's going to go, to be honest. Oh, yeah, that's a good amount of damage to the cannon minion there. We'll see how that progresses over time. Dignitas are going to send Zion Spartan over that way. He does have teleport, though, so he should be able to clear that and keep that safe. And thankfully, those inhib turrets do regen with that wave that will stay alive. TSM with another attempt at a Baron Bay. I don't feel like Baron Baiting is that strong against this team uh, from Dignitas. Because they have so much damage, it's extremely dangerous to be caught inside that pit. But again, TSM going right back to the pit. See if Dig can play this one effectively. They have effectively cleared out the vision, so good wards. Ward sweeping here from TSM. And they're going to go in for this one. Crumbs into the front line. Darius throwing the side, but he's now completely alone on this fight. Ancient. Using a lot of health. No damage comes out from the Kulin. Kiwi can have to be a bit careful. Some rockets come out. Stun onto Amazing. Crumbs still goes in. Says, no, guys, guys, we can go mid lane instead. Dig the house, go for that one. Now they run towards Baron. So a large chunk of Darius health traded for Kiwi Kids. Crumbs, not only does he not have an ulti, but he doesn't have any mana either. You gotta be careful, Dyrus is gonna heal back up with the home guards. He's got teleport, so TSM oh. gonna be at full power. He will teleport onto the lantern. This could be an important fight, and there we go. Kiwi Pie into the back line. Zion Spartan stuck in the barrel pit. They pick up Krem. A big shot from catches the few, but there's no kills coming through. Shifter staying alive so far. Amazing gets the slow. He goes back in. The knockup. Cutie Pie gets a kill. Can he get out though? He's trying to run away. And he does. Dyrus goes down. The wild turtle goes in, but he can't get the kill. Only Gleave and Bjorn can survive the fight. It was a good collapse from TSM. However, Turtle focused on the end there, trying to finish off Cutie Pie. Two solo laners still up. The two APs. Gregson's on the run. Zion Spartan with the slow, kicks the kill up, and now only Gleeve is alive against three. They're going to take down the inhibitor one more time. They've got a cannon minion as well. They could win the game. And this time it's Zion teleporting back in with full health. Dignitas to take the match. Wow. And Lofo Doko to take the bowl cut. Bull cut TSM's coach, a 44 minute win and retention of first place here for Team Dignitas. Excellently played game. Slow and patient for sure. That Baron call. Zion Spartan said Baron had a four week cooldown. <laughs> and that was the climactic fight. I'm a cutie pie. The fact that he kited that fight out was so important there.
Yeah, we're gonna have to take a look at uh, replay from that last Baron because that's exactly what decided the game. That was so close to going in TSM's favor. They had really strong positioning with Dyrus teleporting back in full life. But Dignitas play it well, spread out. They got out the backside of the Baron pit and then were able to get back around to defend 25. Strong game there from Dig. They were ahead of goal almost the whole game. Yep, they did hold the lead. And I was still impressed by TSM's ability to trade objectives back. The turret lead was never really in Dig's favor until the very end of that game. TSM had a lot of focus there. They did play the map quite smart. But Dig just always found a way to win team fights.